his disciples, his first word was, Come. He invited them to allow him to love them unconditionally. In the second column, he invited them into an intimate personal relationship with himself. In the third column, he said that he wanted to change them. Part of the transformation process is that we have to go back to our family of origin and recognize whether we live from sinful patterns that we inherited from them. We must disciple our emotions. In the fourth column, the automatic result then is a transformed person whose life attracts people to Jesus. Another change he wants to bring in us in column 3 is that he wants us to forgive unconditionally. There is so much unforgiveness in the world. Once, a father advertised in a Spanish newspaper, Pablo de Silva, this is your father. Please meet me Wednesday at 3 p.m. at the railway station in Madrid. I want to reconcile with you. When he got there, there were 20 Pablo de Silvas waiting for their fathers. Some truths about forgiveness. There is nothing that cannot be forgiven. Nothing is too big to be forgiven. No one, never mind what they did, is undeserving of forgiveness. All of us has experienced wrongs done to us. There are times that each one of us needs to forgive someone else. None of us is perfect. There are times that each one of us needs to be forgiven for something we did to them. Forgiveness is the journey towards healing. We heal the world bit by bit by healing the broken parts. Every time we harm or are harmed, it has a dramatic impact on the world around us. Forgiveness is how we bring peace to ourselves and the world. Why do we forgive? We forgive others because we have been forgiven a multitude of sins and wrongdoings by Jesus. Forgiving means that I freely pass on what was given to me. As disciples of the forgiver, we want to imitate his values and lifestyle. We want to grow into his character. And one of his core characteristics is his limitless forgiveness. Discipleship means repeating his life, including to forgive. Jesus commanded us to forgive. Discipleship asks obedience. We cannot follow Jesus and escape this. Forgiveness is a gift given to myself. It is not weakness. It requires courage and strength. Forgiveness is in our self-interest. When we forgive, we decide to take back our own fate and feelings. We become our own liberators. Through the chains of bitterness, the person or situation that harmed us holds the key to our happiness. That person will be our jailer. The strings that we attach to the gift of unforgiveness become the chains that bind us to the person that harmed us. We continue to be that person's victim. I have a choice. Will I let past hurts control me and keep me acting in self-centered ways? Or will I let the peace and love of the Holy Spirit control my future? Coordinates regarding forgiveness. Healing and reconciliation are not magic spells. It does not erase the reality of the injury. Jesus prayed for betrayers. He offered forgiveness. But he still had the wounds and the scars when he appeared to his disciples. He could heal leprosy and heal others, but he chose not to erase the evidence. If we want real forgiveness and real healing, we must face the real injury. The cycle of forgiveness is activated and completed only in truth and honesty. It does not deny, ignore, or excuse what another has done, but it acknowledges the hurt, the pain, and the sin, and chooses, in the light of all, to extend mercy anyway, just as God has shown mercy to us. 
Forgiveness is not carrying our suffering in silence. I may not forget, but I do forgive. I am in pain and grief. I am sad. I am betrayed. I am angry this has been done to me. Forgiveness is not holy amnesia, which erases the past. Instead, it is the experience of healing that draws the poison out. You may recall the hurt, but you will not relive the pain. Forgiveness has drawn out the sting. Forgiveness is not to pretend things are anything other than they are, but we take a leap of faith in forgiving. We do not deny that we are always vulnerable to being hurt again, but we leap anyway. If we feel compelled to restore our dignity by rejecting our pain and denying our grief, this rejection closes the process. If you forgive yourself for being imperfect, you can now forgive others too. I must remember, the perpetrator also has a story. He wounded me because he reacted out of his own pain, shame or ignorance. If we see it this way, we may even empathize with the perpetrator. In this sense, he is a victim also. If we have been in his shoes, in his story, Maybe we would have acted in the same way. By forgiving, we move forward in life and get healed. We believe people can change for the better. The possibility of transformation lies in everybody. It's not a quick fix. It may take several journeys through remembering and grieving before I can truly forgive and be free. Forgiving does not mean forgetting. When we forgive a person, the memory of the wound might stay with us for a long time, even throughout our lives. But forgiveness changes the way we remember. It converts the curse into a blessing. When we forgive our parents for their divorce, our children for their lack of attention, our friends for their unfaithfulness in crisis, our doctors for their ill advice, we no longer have to experience ourselves as the victims of events we had no control over. Forgiveness allows us to claim our own power and not let these events destroy us. Forgiveness indeed heals memories. Forgiveness is a process of letting go. In order to be able to forgive, I have to give up the right to revenge. As long as I reserve a right to take revenge, it is impossible to forgive. Gandhi said, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. It is not true that the pain will go away if we hurt those who hurt us. My expectations of an apology. This apology might never come. If I wait for it, I shall never forgive. Reconciliation involves two parties. Forgiveness involves only one party. The victim of my anger or bitterness may not even know about it. My expectations that the person will understand the pain that they caused. They might for several reasons never have an idea of what their actions did to me. be forgiven? I need to forgive myself for mistakes I made, sin I committed, or wrong decisions that I took, 
which caused me pain. Political or other systems that caused me not to reach my full potential or stole my opportunities. Very often it is these significant others who cause the most damage in our lives. Peter denied that he knows Jesus. Judas betrayed Jesus. His mother and brothers did not understand him. God, whom I keep accountable for things that happened in my life. God does not cause everything. I cannot keep God responsible for what people did to me. The church for causing me pain. Forgiveness and love. God's love is unlimited. Our love is not. We cannot blame people for offering us limited expressions of unlimited love. It means continually I must be willing to forgive the other person for not fulfilling all my needs and desires. It says, I know you love me. You don't have to love me unconditionally. Only God does that. I too must ask for forgiveness, for not being able to fulfill other people's total needs, for no human being can do that. Henry Nouwen says, We sometimes grab onto people and expect from them affection and affirmation and love that they cannot give. If we want other people to give us something that only God can give us all the time, we are guilty of idolatry. We become demanding and manipulative. We have to forgive people for not giving us the level of love and acceptance that we all crave for. Forgive parents, friends, the church, for they did the best they could, but maybe not what was needed. How do we know that painful memories are healed? The ability to reconcile with others. When I can break down the walls around my heart, when I don't play the blame game anymore, when I encounter the perpetrator, I don't keep his sin against him anymore. The ability to reach out and love. Unforgiveness is to imprison ourselves. I cannot give or receive love. Relationships are healed. The ability to bless others. Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Do what's best, as above, so below. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. You're in charge. You can do anything you want. You're a blazing beauty. Yes, yes, yes. In prayer, there is a connection between what God does and what you do. You can't get forgiveness from God, for instance, without also forgiving others. If you refuse to do your part, you cut yourself off from God's part.